time is slipping away from me. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing baby update number three. If you have not seen the previous two pregnancy updates, my first trimester and the beginning of my second trimester, be sure to go check that out. I left off last video talking about my second trimester, beginning of my second trimester. I was at 16 weeks, I think. Well, this video will be the rest of my second trimester. I'm at the end of six months right now and I'll be going into this month seven, which is crazy to say because, whew, I feel like I've only been pregnant for five minutes. It feels like it's going by so fast. The second trimester has been a breeze. I've been really comfortable. Like I haven't really had a lot of issues. I haven't had any complications. I haven't had any like scares or anything like crazy happen. Everything has been going really smoothly for the second trimester, which I'm really happy about. I haven't been like extremely uncomfortable. I've been uncomfortable like the normal uncomfortable parts of pregnancy that most people feel. But it's not anything out of the ordinary to where I feel like, oh my god, I could never do this again. Like, it's not really that bad. Um, week 16, my symptoms were very mild. I started to get more energy. Stomach was getting bigger. I forgot to mention this, but I did feel flutters on week 14 on the plane. Now that I know what flutters feel like, I know that was flutters. I didn't know then, so I didn't want to say because I wasn't sure. I thought it was just gas. But it felt like a little gas bubble in one spot. It was like one spot on my stomach and it was just like... Doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. So I felt flutters like that for the first time going to New York because anytime I'm in a vehicle, some type of transportation, baby moves a lot, like a lot of kicking, a lot of movement. So I don't know if that's baby saying I don't like this or saying we, this is fun. I couldn't really feel a lot, but I knew I was feeling something. I knew I was feeling a little bit of movement. I just didn't know if that was baby or not yet, but I did feel it first at 14 weeks. 17 weeks is when we found out the gender of the baby. Um, we had another ultrasound appointment at the first look ultrasound place that we had went to to find out that we were pregnant. We've known since then. Um, we have not been dropping hints, so please don't go back and try to find some hints because we have not been dropping hints and so we're not gonna say. My family does not know, um, so yeah. That was a really funny appointment. Um, we got to see the baby sucking, the, sucking their thumb, which was cute. We found out, but like, it wasn't like a huge reaction. It wasn't like, a, oh my God, or, you know, like we just was like, we think it's this. And then she was like looking around. It took forever. The umbilical cord was in between the legs, so we could not tell. So we had to keep getting baby to move around. Baby moves a lot during ultrasounds, so we could not really see what was going on. Um, and so I had to stand up. I had to drink some apple juice, get back, lay back down. It took about 30, 40 minutes for us to really see. Obviously, we're going to be happy either way, but... It was just like a funny appointment because it's like, what is this baby doing? This baby be moving a lot, okay? Which explains the early flutters because I'm like, what are you doing? Week 18, my belly started popping a lot and I also noticed that my boobs were popping a lot. <laughs> I love my boobs. If, it was, if there's anything I love most about this pregnancy, it's the tittage for me. I've never had titties before. So this is, this is life changing. This is monumental for me. Um, so I just want everyone to see them as much as possible. <laughs> I have gone up, but I have gone up two bra sizes. So I had to buy a new bra. I got a Soma bra. I asked the people on Instagram what bra I should get and they said Soma. So um, I went and tried out the Soma bra and I do really like it. This is the Soma in Bliss wireless bra. Love it. If you have big titties or if you're like nursing or whatever, I heard they have really good nursing bras too, so. So yeah, I've gone up two cup sizes. I was before, I was a 32A, um, but 32A is the equivalent to 30B. Um, I was always not really a full 32A, like I kind of fit one, but not really. Now, after measuring myself, I am currently a 30D slash 32C. So this bra is a 32C. And knowing that my boobs will probably get bigger by the time I'm at the end of this pregnancy, I'll probably end up being a 32D. Um, so that's wild to me. Week 19, we went to Tulsa for a transformation conference. Traveling that week was the first time I ever noticed my ankles swelling. We were doing a lot of jumping <laughs> and worshiping the Lord. Uh, we also were on our feet all day and walking a lot. So... 
that contributed to the swelling as well my ankles were so swollen um they were huge they were like that big around by the time i got back to the hotel that's really the only time my ankles swell is if i'm traveling or if i'm standing and jumping up and down and doing things I shouldn't be doing for a long time um, but mostly the mostly traveling is really what triggers it because even now since you know the rest of the trimester has passed um, I only notice ankle swelling when I'm traveling so anytime I get on a plane usually the plane dehydrates you um, planes suck all of the hydration out of your body so you have to kind of double up on water and make sure you're hydrated um, which I probably didn't do enough of so I noticed on that trip and on um, the trip we did to uh, our, our baby moon, which I'll get to in a second, my ankles were just done. But when I'm at home and I'm not traveling for a long period of time, I don't notice any swelling of my ankles at all. Even after walking all day or being up on my feet, I don't notice ankle swelling. So um, I really just think it's a traveling thing. So I did get some compression socks um, once I got back home. Week 20 through 22, uh, I didn't really notice any new symptoms. Like I said, my energy was really good, eating really good, don't really have any food aversions, no cravings. I don't really not like anything. Um, I do still get a weird taste in my mouth after eating really, really sweet stuff or um, really citrusy stuff. So I try to steer clear of that a little bit, but for the most part, I don't really have any problems eating. Like I like everything. Even the things I don't really like, usually, I like. That's a blessing. I have not had anything make me want to throw up or nothing like that, food-wise. I love everything. My shoes stopped fitting me around week 20, I think. <laughs> a lot of my shoes, a lot of my boots um, were too tight. I can't fit my Prada boots. And I do notice that my shoes are kind of tight, so I feel like I've gone up like a half size. My Yeezy slides have been the most comfortable for me, honestly. They've been the most comfortable shoe I have. And also, since the fall was coming up, I already had planned on wearing Ugg boots a lot, so... Ugg boots have been my jam as well. So we did our 20-week uh, ultrasound. I did end up switching care. I decided to go to a birth center. So I like this experience. I like it a lot better. They are so sweet. We did a tour and we liked everything we saw. We liked everything that they said. We loved how they were more so about caring for the mom and the baby as much as possible um, instead of just trying to get us in and out. At first, I did a transvaginal ultrasound. So they stick the thing up in me well I got to stick it in myself it's not invasive because they let me do things myself and they asked me if I want to do it so we did transvaginal looked at the cervix looked at the ovaries everything looks really really good um it was funny because Cam and Lexus were with me at that appointment and they were cringing even though I stuck it in myself so I was not in pain it was not uncomfortable and they're just like are you okay <sighs> my cervix length is good I have plenty of room to grow so that's not an issue the anatomy scan part is the part that's the longest it takes like an hour um, and basically she's just rubbing the wand over my stomach and trying to find baby and make sure they see all the parts, the necessary parts. So eyes, ears, nose, mouth, all the fingers and toes, the spine, making sure that they can see the heart, making sure they can see the lungs, just making sure everything looks good. I have not got any bad news in regards to that. So everything looks really good. She said baby's developing very, very well. Moving around a lot, a lot of movement. She was like trying to see stuff. She's like, yeah, it's just hard to see because baby's moving so much. They did confirm that my placenta's in the front, anterior placenta, which means that my placenta is where my belly button is. It's like right in front and then the baby is behind that. So it's kind of absorbing some of the kicks and blows that I was feeling prior to. So a lot of the flutters that I was feeling was because the baby's kicks were behind the placenta. Um, my parents came to visit, so my mom was like feeling my stomach and could feel the baby kicking from the outside. So I don't know if that just means baby is kicking real hard or if my placenta has moved a little bit. I feel like my placenta is a little bit on the side, like on this side, as opposed to being across the entire front. It feels like it's like on this side. I feel like I can feel it a lot of times. And then baby's kicks are a lot stronger on the other side. So she felt kicks on the other side for sure. She, I felt it and she felt it. And then it was just a, a cool moment for my mom to like feel my baby moving around on the inside of me. It's just a sweet moment. So right after my parents left, we went on our baby moon to Cabo. If you haven't seen that video, we did vlog it so you guys can check that out. And it was just weird being on vacation with a belly. I, it's a first for me. So I was like, I had a good time though. We went to Nobu because Nobu had the best food out of all the resorts I've ever been to. And I made sure we went to Nobu to get some food. So we ate really, really good that whole trip. 
my feet did swell up again which wasn't fun I had to do a lot of like elevating my feet but we rested most of the time we went to the spa I did a lot of swimming to kind of like help with my movement and stretching I did wear compression socks on the plane it was a four hour and 40 minute flight and it was such a long flight I was so tired afterwards um I probably should have got up and walked around a little bit but I didn't um, I just felt really cramped. I hated it. I really wanted to get business class for that flight, but because we booked the trip the month of, I, they had already sold out of business tickets. So, But it's fine. I survived. Um, we got through customs and stuff, and by then my ankles were done. Uh, so the compression socks did not work on the way there, but on the way back, the compression socks worked for me uh, because we doubled them up. I ordered my compression socks on Amazon. I'll put a link below if you want to just try them out. This is how long they are. They come all the way up to your knee. So instead of putting them all the way up for the flight back, I rolled them down so they were like halfway. And this part was like scrunched down over my ankles. That helped to keep them from swelling a lot. Um, to just, it compressed it even more to help me and my ankles not swell as much. But overall, I don't like compression socks. I hate wearing socks in general. I don't like my feet to be hot. So it's just, I feel like just drink enough water and if they swell, they swell. I mean, I don't know. That's, that's the best I can do at this point. Cam felt the baby kicking for the first time on the baby moon, which was really, really cool. Um, we were laying in the bed um, one night on the trip and he was like putting his hands on my stomach or whatever and baby was kicking and he could feel it. And he was like, oh, he almost cried. But then we had sex after, so he didn't cry. Speaking of, I never got my sex drive back. So there's that. Um, I'm not really like opposed to having sex. Like I don't mind having sex. It's just, it's not comfortable. It just feels weird. It feels so weird having a big belly. I just wanna like, I just wanna unzip my belly and like put baby to the side for a second while we do our thing and then put baby back. Cause baby just be in the way. I just need baby to not be there when I'm doing this. It just don't feel right. It does not feel right to me to have another person a part of that experience. <laughs> I have to pee every couple minutes. So it just kind of like ruins the vibe, the mood for me. Cause you know when you go pee, you gotta wipe. It's just not as enjoyable as it used to be when I was free. <laughs> you know, when I could lay on my stomach and roll around and do what I needed to do. The baby just kind of be in the way. And, and the fact that I have a hard time getting in and out of bed now. I have to like push myself up, roll to the side, swing my legs around. Like it's a whole thing. It just, I don't know. I've yet to find my Stella got her groove back moment with the belly. So I don't know if I'll get it. I don't want Cam to feel like he can't you know, enjoy me while I'm pregnant. So it is what it is. Am I enjoying myself? Not very much, but I don't think it's gonna change while I'm pregnant, so. But we had a good time on vacation still. Like we still had a good time. Um, just isn't as wild as our other vacations. <laughs> I couldn't really go crazy like I normally do, but it was very relaxing and uh, I ate really good. So I feel like we accomplished that. 20 week scan I was 138 and I started to noticeably fill out more so obviously my face has filled out a lot I did have to take off my wedding ring when we got back from Mexico the week after that I was like I probably should take my ring off because I'm getting bigger obviously I'm carrying more weight so it's got to go somewhere my ankles are swollen but my hands are not really swollen like my hands look normal they're just a little more full than normal y'all know my hands are usually really skinny my arms are really skinny but now they look more like a normal person like I'm not bony but my ring size when I got married was a six uh, and I was also 98 pounds when I got my wedding ring so the fact that I've kept it on all these years and have never really decided to get it resized is dumb on my part because I probably wasn't even a six anymore before I got pregnant so the fact that I got pregnant and my hands had gotten a little bit bigger I noticed that my ring was really tight and if you follow me on TikTok, you know my TikTok went viral of me getting my ring uh, sawed off my finger. Uh, basically, we had to go to the uh, jeweler down the street from our house. It was an emergency because it took me about three, four days to try to get it off. Cam was like, you're probably going to have to get that cut off. And I start crying. Like, I cried big tears. I was like, I just don't like all these changes. It wasn't just the ring that made me cry, though. I feel like it was a combination of things. It was like, I got to give up my ring. I got to give up my office. Like, I had to give up my house dreams, like getting a new house. We had to give that up because we have to use 
some of the money that we were going to use to put down on the house to pay for this baby. Um, and all of that that comes with that. I mean, babies are not cheap. They're not free, especially if you're an entrepreneur. Uh, insurance or not, I'm paying for the insurance. It's like none of that money is staying in my pocket. <laughs> There's no money staying in my pocket at this point. On top of like business problems that I don't even want to get into, there are so many things that have gone wrong this year that I'm pissed about. Pissed because I trusted certain people who are professionals at what they do to do their job and they did not do it correctly. And now I have to go back and fix it and it's costing me money and I might have to take this guy to court. Yeah, it's just like, there's a lot of things that are costing money right now. And so we're gonna need the house money for the baby. So we're not gonna get a new house anytime soon, which I have to kind of mourn the loss of the house that I never had. The baby's still a blessing, yes, but there are a lot of things that come with this that are just a little sad to me so the fact that I had to get my ring cut off was like the last straw for me it was like the last thing that <laughs> I thought would happen um I, got, I gave myself a few days to process it then the last day where I finally decided okay we gotta get this cut off now we went and get it cut got it cut off I could laugh about it I recorded it posted it on TikTok because I was like child it is what it is at this point I've gotten over it I've cried my tears I've let it go. And yes, I did try. Everybody's like, you should have tried doing this. You should have tried Windex. You should have tried dish soap. You should have tried oil. You should have tried icing it. You should have tried, like everybody was trying to tell me everything to do. And I'm like, y'all, you think I already have not done this? It took us four days to get to the point of me going to the jeweler to get it cut off. And by then the jeweler was like, we can't even use Windex on this. Like this is not gonna work. So trust me, trust me. I tried everything before getting it cut. Okay, I was trying my best to get it off and it just would not come off. So. We cut the ring off. <laughs> I'm currently wearing like this little heart ring on here. I just put whatever ring fits. Nothing real, it ain't unfancy. Um, everybody's like, oh, Cam gotta get you a new ring now. Y'all, I'm probably gonna put that ring back on. It's gold so they can easily just weld it back together and resize it for me. And I'll just wear that one until one day when Cam is really, really rich and he can get me the biggest ring ever. But right now we're focused on paying for babies. So I'm probably not gonna get a new ring. So don't even get your hopes up. Still feeling a decrease in desire to dress up and look cute um, lately because I've had more energy and stuff and I have a lot of things going on. Like had to shoot the Amazon drop, had to do my baby shower, um, a lot of different things happening. So I've had to be cute for the last couple weeks. So I've been feeling a lot better about getting cute. Um, not necessarily like wearing clothes, um, I've been wearing mostly my Amazon drop and Amazon stuff that I got since I've been pregnant. Otherwise, I have not bought clothes. Like, I have not been shopping. I don't plan on buying anything new. I'm going on a vacation next week, and I'm not buying anything for this vacation. I'm wearing all the clothes that I already have, which is a first for me. I normally buy new stuff, but this trip, I'm not buying anything at all. Just because I'm tired of buying clothes that I'm probably not going to be able to fit after this, right? Um, and that's kind of been a Debbie Downer for me, just because, like, I like to buy new things and wear new things and so the fact that I'm not really buying anything and not shopping has kind of not been motivating for me. Also getting my hair done has been a struggle. We're not even gonna go into it. I just girl I went and got some braids for my trip and with somebody I trust and I'm just gonna stick it stick with that because I don't know trying to wear my real hair has been a struggle and it has been ruining my vibe. <laughs> it's been killing my vibe because I have not been feeling cute and I have not been wanting to feel cute. The easier my hair is the better because it keeps me from being a bum all the time when my hair is cute. I definitely feel the need to start working out now that I'm getting into my third trimester especially. I said the third trimester for me is game time um, so that'll probably be when I start doing my training. I'm gonna do birth classes and then I'm also going to be doing some light working out. I'll probably be walking, stretching a lot. I'm gonna be doing a lot of squats probably going to do water aerobics and things that are um, low tension and low impact but still help me to stretch my body out and get ready for labor just want to strengthen my pelvic floor and stuff really but I don't really have a lot of body pain I did get a massage when we were in Mexico I did not enjoy it I would much rather like do more stretching type stuff because this the massage was just kind of boring it was like girl she pressing on me and this ain't doing nothing I need somebody to fold me up like a pretzel and crack my back but obviously you can't do that when you're pregnant so um the pain in my tailbone has kind of been the same it's been constant it's not really bad right now it actually has kind of subsided a little bit which is good it was a lot worse at first but now i think it's getting a lot better i feel like one thing that has been helping is the way that i sleep so um 
I do have my pregnancy pillow that I've really been enjoying. My mom gave me, however, this, actually she didn't give it to me. I found it in her closet and I stole it. I found this pillow, which I put on my Amazon store as well. I have a um, little section on my Amazon store called Mom Things, if you want to shop any of my mom faves right now. This pillow is a knee pillow. So you can put your knees in here and sleep with it in between your knees and it kind of helps to align your hips while you're sleeping. I feel like that has been helping me a lot with sleeping. So I'm gonna take that with me on my next trip. Very seldomly, not a lot, but every now and then I would feel my stomach tighten and I thought it was baby like stretching out, but um, my last doctor's appointment check-in, she said that those are Braxton Hicks. So I have been feeling a couple Braxton Hicks and she was like, it's totally fine as long as they're not back to back. And she said that mainly comes by one, straining yourself, lifting something heavy or doing something you're not supposed to. Two, it could be the baby just stretching out and moving a lot. It's practice contraction, so it's basically your body getting ready for labor, but you're not going into labor. So they should be harmless. They don't hurt at all. It just feels like my stomach getting really, really tight. Um, but she did say another reason that they might happen is if I'm dehydrated. So I've been trying to drink as much water as possible and make sure that I'm hydrated. And what I've noticed is a lot of the water that I drink is not hydrating enough. So I've been using different methods to try to get more hydration, <laughs> excuse me, get more hydration in my body. A lot of you guys know I've used to like liquid IVs. I don't like liquid IV as much anymore because it's too sweet for me. I don't like the flavor of it. It tastes like, I can taste the sugar and I've been preferring more of a saltier flavor for my water lately. I heard putting Himalayan salt in your water is like really, really good because it helps to absorb. Um, we have reverse osmosis water, um, which takes all the minerals out of your water, which you need the minerals to help absorb into your body. Um, so I've been using the Himalayan salt method, method or I did start ordering uh, Elements. So um, Elements is like liquid IVs, but it doesn't have any sugar in it and they have more salt, sodium. Because I do, I am a little deficient in sodium, I decided to get those instead and I really, really like them. There, it's like a thousand milligrams of sodium. It also has magnesium in it, which is magnesium is really good for you as well. So I've been ordering those. I also have those linked in my Amazon store if you want to check them out, but I really, really like them. They're not salty. They do have one that doesn't have any flavor in it and it's very salty. It tastes like ocean water. But I get the citrus salt one and it tastes really good. So if you like something that's a little less sweet, those are really good, the elements, L-M-N-T. Also drinking coconut water, but I've learned that I don't really like coconut water um, that is bottled. It just, I have not found one that I like the flavor of. The one that I can tolerate the most is the Whole Foods one. I really like that one. Um, I heard that Harmless Harvest is the best quality coconut water. I don't like the flavor at all, but it does work for hydration. Um, and I've been putting like mint and lime juice in them to kind of help with the flavor. If you don't like the flavor, you can always add mint, lime juice, tahine, make yourself a little mojito type situation. I, I had fun making some ice cubes with mint and lime, so you could just get creative with your water. I'm really excited about going on vacation because we're going to Jamaica and I get to get fresh coconuts which I'm really excited about because I love fresh coconuts. It's so good. The water is so good. I'm just trying to make sure I'm very hydrated. And since I've been doing that, I have not been feeling the Braxton Hicks as much and eating enough fiber. That has been a huge thing for me as well because I'm extremely scared of hemorrhoids. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like deathly afraid of hemorrhoids, but I don't want hemorrhoids. The one thing I don't want is my booty hole to hurt. I hate bad poops. I love a good poop. I love when I can sit on the toilet and my poop just comes out and it be like just real smooth and no problems I'm not straining and pushing and trying to force it out it just happens I've been trying not to strain I've been trying to teach myself how to breathe through my poops if I do feel like they're not coming out as good so I'm like trying to breathe through and like not force my body to push anything out um, and I think that's helping me to wire my brain to like okay don't push like don't force anything because you don't want to tear you don't want to rip anything you don't want your blood vessels to you know what I mean? Because hemorrhoids come from you straining and pushing out. Most people do get hemorrhoids when they give birth, so I'm scared about that. But if it happens, it happens. I can't control it. It is what it is. But I am le trying to learn how to control my body and pushing. Um, and obviously I'll learn more of that when I start taking my classes, my birth classes, which I'll be doing soon. Weeks 23 through 27. This month has been a breeze. We did the Amazon drop, which turned out really, really good. I had a whole lot of energy for that, which I was really excited about. I've been going live a lot more this month because I've been feeling a lot more energetic. 
um, since I wasn't traveling, I feel like the traveling was kind of making me more tired. Once we did go to Dallas um, for Thanksgiving, I ate so much on Thanksgiving. It was so great. This is the best Thanksgiving I've ever had. The food was so good. One thing I didn't like, though, I did cook a lot. So I made three things for Thanksgiving and my ankles were done. They were so swollen by the time I was done. So I sat down most of the rest of the day and just ate and played games with my family. But my ankles were out of there so i will never cook three things back to back pregnant ever again <laughs> not that much i don't even need to be in the kitchen like that so i don't even know how i push myself to do that and then we had the baby shower that saturday so i will have a vlog a little bit of a vlog for the baby shower we didn't vlog a ton because obviously we were trying to enjoy ourselves and it was kind of dark in there so it was hard to see um but i wanted a baby shower that wasn't a baby shower i wanted the baby shower to be more like a party just to celebrate i didn't want to open clothes and open gifts and no and also because we were in dallas and i live in chicago um most of the gifts i wasn't gonna have there anyway so i wasn't gonna be open gifts we played two games two or three games um it was very quick it happened so fast it was over so quick but we had it at alice um which is a restaurant in dallas it's like a asian fusion restaurant the theme was rainforest so i tried to do like a rainforest nighttime safari i got the inspo from one all our vacations the theme was for me okay because i wanted to wear feathers and i wanted all of my family to wear animal print i wanted to have like a green wall and i wanted to have like these cool like, palm trees and stuff like i wanted it to feel like an oasis because that's where you find god that's where you find peace in the, in a desert because deserts are dry and barren you know what i mean the oasis was where there's fertility and growth i wanted it to feel like a desert oasis and then i was like everybody can be the animals because i didn't want like animals like fake animals so i was like everybody can be the animals i also kind of got a little bit of inspo from christine quinn from selling sunset her baby shower was a jungle theme like a jungle chic so i wanted to do like a rainforest chic it reminded me a lot of our vacation where we did the rainforest tree house in mexico at one and only mandarina if you have not seen that vlog that was one of the best vacations I've ever been on. Oh my God, that room was amazing. But I wanted it to feel like that. I wanted to have that vibe, like expensive luxury tree house in the jungle in the rainforest with the animals. It was really fun. I wore like this green dress. It's a Hanifa dress and it has feathers and I looked like the tree, a tree. So I called myself the tree of life. Everybody else was the animals and I was the tree of life bearing fruit. Baby's been kicking a lot. A lot a lot of movement um, I noticed that baby kicks a lot when there's a lot of like loud noises going on or music when I'm at church if I'm singing or cam is preaching I definitely can feel baby kicking when I was at the baby shower walking around talking to people and laughing I could feel baby kicking one thing I'm really grateful for which a lot of people say is a good thing I don't feel any kicks when I'm laying down and trying to go to sleep I sleep pretty good I sleep through the night I probably wake up twice so I'll wake up by clockwork, usually around 1 or 2 o'clock, I'll wake up to go pee. I'll wake up again around 4 o'clock to pee. And then I'll um, wake up at 6. And I notice kicking, like around 6.30, I'll feel baby kicking. So like 6.27, 6.30, baby will be like, hey, I'm up, feed me. Um, so yeah, I feel like we have a little routine going. I notice the most kicks, though, around 5, 6 o'clock. That's when I notice the most kicks. So I feel like maybe baby gets excited for dinner time or something or... I don't know. So yeah, I have a lot of work to do. Um, my third trimester is crunch time. Um, I'm going to be moving out of this office. I'm going to be moving all of my stuff out of here. This is going to be the baby room. So we're going to have to move all the baby stuff in here. I have a ton of stuff from the registry. So that's really great. I'm so grateful for my friends and family who already have given us so much stuff. I'm not going to be doing a public registry for all of you guys to buy me gifts because I'm already overwhelmed with all of the stuff we already have. And we don't have a lot of space to put everything in here. And I don't want I don't want y'all to feel like y'all gotta buy gifts. I really don't. I don't want y'all to feel like y'all gotta buy something for me. It's not that big of a deal. Like, we have a ton of stuff. I would rather you guys just support the way you have been supporting, like commenting, sharing, buying the Amazon drop, that kind of thing. But if you feel so inclined to support monetarily, I'm not gonna stop you from blessing if you want to. Um, I just I don't it feels weird to me, but I'm not gonna stop you if you want to. I I was told not to block my blessings. So if you want to give, I do have a link where you guys can send um, for like a diaper fund. I don't want this to be like, oh, she's asking for money. I'm not. Y'all asked me. So I'm giving y'all what y'all want. This is this is y'all. This is not me. Okay. 
So I put my little PayPal link down there. You guys can send money, but I just, it feels weird asking for it. I'm not asking for it at all. If you don't want to send anything, you do not have to. Please don't. I don't want to take your money. I'm just trying to be obedient. Please don't feel obligated to do anything for me. Okay, this baby is already blessed. This baby already has a ton of stuff. We already have a stroller, a car seat coming. We've got a bassinet. We've got uh, breast pumps. We've got onesies and baby books and all types of stuff, all types of things that I need for a newborn. So you guys do not have to buy anything. But if you just wanted to bless, it'll go towards the diapers. I think that's all. I don't really have anything else to say. If I miss anything, I'll try to update you guys. Oh! The bump. So bump update. This is the 27 week bump. I have been using tons of shea butter y'all to keep my skin nice and smooth. I'm not really carrying high or low. I'm really in the middle. I don't really have much else place to go. I'm a small person so I'm all belly right now. My booty looks nice though. If you guys have any questions please let me know. But that is my update and yay cheers to the third trimester. Time. It's slipping away from me. I will be doing another update probably halfway through third trimester because I know I won't make it to the end of third trimester to give you guys an update because the end of third trimester will be me giving birth. I'll probably give another update in January. Um, I will be having another shower in January for my Chicago fam. The Amazon drop is coming soon, so be sure to support the Amazon drop. Sign up for notifications so you do not miss it. Go live. It will be going live very, 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 very soon. I will give you guys the exact date, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following me on Instagram so you get the updates as soon as they come in because I may not post them right away on here. So Instagram and TikTok is where you will find the most up-to-date current information about the Amazon drop. But y'all, the pictures are fire. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that, and I'll talk to you guys in my next video.